in a powerful series on the subject of honor. Don't go very far. And we have been learning things about the power of honor and building an honorable culture, what honor looks like. And uh, it is really revolutionary. This message has been provoking repentance, um, in some cases restoration. And we're learning as a culture almost how insensitive we are to the subject of dishonor. We, we, it is so normal in our culture that we don't have an eye to see where it is, how it acts, um, and what upholds it, what dishonor does. But we've been learning for the past several weeks, wherever there is dishonor, you're going to find death, and it's going to be premature death. And wherever you find honor, you're going to find life and preservation. How many of you know to extend the life of a thing, you have to honor it? And honor also protects, whether it is our leaders, our bosses, our children. Honor is a protective mechanism. It is one of the ways we protect a thing is to honor it. And so we have been learning the power of honor, that honor is a lifestyle that welcomes and beckons the favor of God. Honor is one of the ways that God qualifies people for what he wants to do next. So learning honor, but most importantly, living honor out is non-negotiable. You have to live it out. And God is very serious about honor. When, when a person who is the life giver tells you I'll kill you, then you need to pay attention to it. The Bible talks talks about honor and and God said if you don't do this I'll shorten your days he took Moses out of here hid the body because the Bible says he dishonored the name of God in front of the people so God does not play with dishonor one of the things that we have been learning as a consistent in this is that it is a dangerous thing for the church to take her cues from the culture we take a lot of cues and a lot of definitions for the culture. And in one of these uh, issues, we find that a lot of people find it difficult to honor if they feel that they've been treated unfairly or unjustly. But the scriptures give no contingency for honor. You will be treated unjustly. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, those that desire to live godly will have persecution. You will be treated unfairly. Jesus said, when the world hates you know that it hated me first so if you use your personal rights as the reason for the absence of honor in your life you will again disqualify yourself from one of the rivers of God's blessing and resources in your life the part that you need to get is that you don't honor people unto people you honor people unto God and when you allow what you know, what you see, what you think, what you feel about a person to justify why you do not honor them, then what happens is you mess your records up in heaven. And when God is looking for opportunity to promote, he passes you by. You're talking about Savior. See? No, he's going to pass you right by if you are found in dishonor. Pass me not, oh gentle. Say, if you're smart, Alec inconsistent and properly postured he will walk past the dishonorable that's a warning I want to give you three different things today and I really feel a powerful anointing to do this and I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to manage this particularly with my time but one of the first things I want you to realize and I'll get here at one o'clock is every broken mother is a damaged daughter anybody who has had a bad mother or anybody that has struggled with motherhood, the root is a daughter wound. And there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that have never had the right to fully become a daughter. Even more worse, many people become a mother before they've mastered what a daughter is. That's one o'clock. But we need to speak to the daughter in women and allow them the rights to mature as daughters before we have women expectations of them. This morning, what we're going to deal with is something a bit more unique and a bit more sensitive, and it's going to be found in 1 Peter, the third chapter. 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And I'm going to highlight some things that is going to really make you reflect on where our culture is, where the kingdom is, as it pertains to one of the most powerful resources and most powerful weapons that God has ever put on the planet, and it's the gift of femininity, the gift of womanhood. It is a powerful necessity to every era, every epoch in history. Women who hold fast to 
the nature of God to cultivate and hold. And in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 7 in the King James Version, it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, be, may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of the plating of the hair and of the wearing of gold or of the putting on of apparel. This is talking about how in this particular epistle there were women who had not matured in womanhood and so in lieu of their insecurity around their identity or their calling as a woman, they would master how people saw them. So this was specifically with the coloring of the hair or with wearing elaborate jewelry. But here's what Paul says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek, look at these character traits, and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection under their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do, what, do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Look at verse 7. Likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving what? Who? Giving honor unto the, the wife, the woman, as the, as the, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. One of the greatest, greatest, greatest crisis in our culture today is the pressures we place on our women. Now you hear that quietness? Because we've got two attitudes in the room. Some of the women think they should have the same pressures as men. And there are men who think that it's unfair for them to share the pressure of life alone. But women in identifying that they are the weaker vessel does not mean that they are not worth it. It means that they were not created for the masculine pressures of the world. And when we force either by abdicating our responsibility or ignoring our responsibilities, women to be confronted with masculine pressures, women have to change to uphold them. And the way they change is by developing certain immunities to their femininity and ultimately who's robbed is men. If a woman is not liberated to be a woman, she has to become something other than that, which means that she cannot hold her duty either to her father, her husband, or her sons. So when we, men, mutate women by making them share the pressures of life that were meant to be men responsible, let me give you an example of that. The pressure of the future is not a female pressure. They're not going to like this today. The pressure of provision is not a female pressure. The pressure of perspective is not a female pressure. Now, it's hard to say amen because we live in a feminist culture that has forced, by default, women to adopt these pressures for survival. But this is why our culture is so strained. It's because we have not acknowledged or what Peter said, honored the women as those that are not supposed to handle what we're supposed to handle. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not intelligent. It doesn't mean that they can't be millionaires. It doesn't mean that they can't be innovative. It means that our pressures are distinct. Masculine pressures and feminine pressures are supposed to be different. But now they're very much so braided into the pressures of the house, which means that where there is a passive man, there will be an overpressurized woman. Where there is an addicted man, a distracted man, a non-decided man, you're going to find that there is a woman overly pressured. And when she is overly pressured, the byproduct is going to be infirmity. The byproduct is going to be anger. The byproduct is going to be attitude. The byproduct is going to be self-negligence. Why? For the matter of survival, I have to put myself aside. Not just being selfless, but being self-sacrificing because I am forced to find my fit under pressures that are innately masculine.
women of God around the world are under pressures that God never intended them to be under. It is demonic for a woman to have to figure out the future for herself. If she is, is married and if she is in a household context, she should not be the one up scratching her head trying to figure out where the 401k is supposed to go or how, in the, I know y'all don't like this, I don't care. Uh, she is not supposed to be the one trying to figure out how she's going to pay for college and school and all of that stuff for several children. I believe that the real problem with our society is gender confusion and gender war. It doesn't mean that there has to be bias and sexism. It means that we need proper perspective on who's supposed to be doing what. And right now in the earth, hear me, there is a war against divine order. And there is a war against supernatural arrangement in houses, in companies, and all of that. Now, women have divine capacity to hold. They have powerful capacity. I even believe that God created pain tolerances in women different from men. But pain and pressure is different. Why won't you say amen in this Anglican church? I said pain and pressures are different. You're not going to split me open for eight hours. You're not going to tell me to sit here and push when I'm hurting. No, because if I had to sit on the table... And push a, 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 a human out of me. I'd say, doctor, kill me while you're at it. I can't take another, uh-uh. And then I'm squeamish, praise be God. I don't want to see no blood and no, and you're not going to just put your hand in me and bring a human out. When he come out, take me out. But the way God created women was that they have an elongated ability to hold the thing. Now, this is why very many of them are sick. Our culture has stopped the women's ministry of weeping. I don't want to spend too much time there. But it is abnormal for women to lose their weep. I'm talking to your sister sledgehead self. I understand what Cardi B told you. I understand what Beyonce told you. But you better find your definition of the word of God before you give your femininity over to a plastic level of women ministry and it's going to bring cancer and disease and sickness. You were born to weep and not for sorrow. When women don't weep, there is a missing stream of prayer in the earth, a missing stream of life in the earth. And our culture has hardened our women so much that they're tired of crying. The devil has stolen the right of women to weep for the right things. And dangerous, this is not my message, but I feel the anointing going here. Dangerous is the woman who finds her weep again. And I'm not talking about agony or despair or regret or loss. But when women weep, that is a warfare statement in the spirit. When women weep, God stops the powers of death. If you don't believe me, the Bible says, look at the woman who would mourn as not be comforted. She started to cry until things were arranged around her. Our problem is we have women with Botox and so is and lip gloss but they've not matured to become somebody who weep. But the prophet said, call for the wailing. Lord have mercy. When there is an emergency in the earth, it's the men who fight, but the women are supposed to weep. I'll get there at 1030. We've done that. How else does the weaker vessel war by their right to weep? By their white right to find a space to cry. They are the weaker vessel for a reason. And it doesn't mean powerless. It means the pressures are different. When you consider what the Bible says in Colossians 3.19, write this down. Because I'm hearing them say talk about that just a little more. Uh, in Colossians 3.19, the Bible says, and you husbands, don't be harsh to your women. In other words, that's not just talking about volume. That's not just talking about attitude. That's talking about do not expose the women you're responsible to to hardship. 
That's harshness. When a woman has been entrusted to your charge, it is dishonorable to not make things easy for them. Y'all don't want to have church. It is dishonorable to make them be the one losing sleep over rent and groceries and deadlines and bills. It's dishonor. The byproduct of a woman overly pressurized is an attack on the tears. They don't have time to weep. They've got to worry about survival. They don't have time to weep. They got to worry about uh, uh, uniforms and field trips and all of the things that stress the feminine experience. There is nothing more criminal than a woman under too much pressure. God created women to expand, to explore, to hold, not live under the pressure of survival. And for some of you, this sounds like Nigerian Igbo language because you live in a culture that has made you believe that your greatest job is to be equal to a man. Now, God loves us the same. The Bible says in Christ there is neither male nor female, but God in his grace gave you different pressures. God in his love assigned different pressures to you. And when in your own identity crisis, you come out of feminine pressure, to make up for the lack of preparation or maturity in a man you're going to realize how irresponsible that is to yourself to live and think and act like a man the, the worst thing they could have told you was to think like a man the devil is a liar God didn't give you a man brain or men pipe work or men attitude praise God if God wanted you to think like a man he'd have made you one And the Bible says you're not supposed to be harsh to women. So that means that if a man is asleep while a woman is trying to figure out the world, that is a hardness issue. That is a harshness. There are some men who may not yell and may not, but, but, but an indecisive man will corrupt the experience of a woman. God has, created, God has created women for great influence. Now, in Isaiah 4 and 1, I want you to look for this. I believe that dangerous things will happen in this church and around the world if we can honor women to the point where they find their right to cry again. Isaiah 4, verse 1. Praise the powerful name of Jesus. And in that day, look at this crisis. This is a crisis. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man. Don't that look like your average TV show? I don't care about you this much. Don't that look like the real housewives of Atlanta? And only three of them married. Don't that look, don't this look like uh, 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 your, your reality TV issues? Or even look at high schoolers and look at uh, what's going on. The ratio is seven to one. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man saying, I'll eat my own bread. I'll wear my own material, my own apparel. Just let me be called by your name to take away my reproach. The perversion in this is I'll take my own provision. I'll take my own future. I'll open up all of this. I'll embrace your pressures. Just give me your brand or your name. Just endorse me. I just want a name. I want the image of being somebody provided for and cared for even though I'm supposed to do the work. I'll do the work if you give me the name. Do you see that? They the, the, the fear of reproach made it seven to one. And what is that? Dishonor to women. One of the ways you honor women is by let, letting them have the pressure they're supposed to have. Now, remember when the woman, Mary Magdalene, came looking with her, her, her precious bottle of whatever. It was ointment and oil and all of that. The disciples got mad because the woman who was disqualified, overlooked, illegal, she found the ministry of weeping. And the Bible says, now, and I want you to think about how God made every woman. You have the, the whole anatomy appropriate for having another human in you. That means that you have the capacity to hold stuff in. You have it for years to hold stuff in. And one of the goals of Satan for women is to make them hold stuff in. So when you've not wept in a while, 
And when you've not found your right to weep, see, the tears are one of the expressions so the soul can clean itself. You show me a bitter woman, an angry woman, an unforgiving woman, I'll show you somebody that has not had ample weeping opportunity. You've got to arrange your emotions in such a way where you can weep and not feel guilty about it. And you can weep. And I'm going to tell you, them tears talk. The right tears talk. The Bible said they are bottled up and then they are poured out when they need to. So I believe that if women did more weeping than nagging, my God, more weeping than being mad, more weeping than cussing, praise God, then what will happen is uh, we would have a beautiful marriage of masculine and feminine authority in the earth who men fight how they're supposed to and women fight how they're supposed to. But the problem is, is we've got to create relational, social, family units that honor women by taking wrong pressures off of them. I know it's quiet. But if women are help meets, then that means the lion's share of responsibility and pressure should be on whoever they're helping. How are you going to help as the head? Praise God. There is, a, there is a line in this. Praise the name of the Lord. I saw Prophetess Katie this morning. The Lord woke me up with you. I told you not to go. Where's my minstrel now? This is where I need to come on. The Spirit of God spoke to me about you, and he, uh, and he told me this. He said, in the same way I started, my spirit, when I, I, I started seeing you in, in cars, driving Apostle Long around in the latter part of her life, your spiritual mom. And God said to tell you, you sold that unto God. God is about to make you a literal sign and a wonder. You are about to baffle not just doctors. You're going to baffle science. You will become a file to be studied where whatever the enemy is trying to do to prematurely rob you all I heard heaven say tell her I left her here God wants you to know three times he's left you here because he's not done with pouring you out prepare yourself the spirit of favor it's, it's about to swallow you whole eat everything from jewels and goals you're going to find that God starts to stir people to give things to you with no explanation it will be in stores it will be in malls you're about to see loving kindness and the Lord says this he's about to break the power of the feeling of loss over you so strongly and he's going to anoint you to be a woman that prophesies until men come into their retribution you will be in this season and to this generation what you thought you would be in another season or another generation and I heard heaven proclaim your harvest is not lost I have not forgotten nor have I overlooked you but I've been keeping strong records and I'm going to extend your life says the spirit of God and these are going to be the days where your youth is renewed like the eagles I'm looking at you literally go through some self examination where you're going to start to take old feathers off and God's going to grow new feathers upon you because this is the season for you to take flight get ready the ghost riders are coming the publishers are coming I have not forgotten about you and the Lord says even as you sat I'm looking at a vision on you on the side of the bed of Apostle Long maybe like a couple of days before she transitioned and the Spirit of God says as you sat on the edge of that bed what I did was I rearranged and I rerouted for heritage to come to you set the spirit of grace you're coming to the days where you're going to finally see in you what heaven has seen in you all along and the Lord says prepare yourself I'm going to strengthen your bones I'm going to strengthen your, your, your literal mind I'm going to do something to allow you to travel there has been a fear to travel in the way that you should but the Lord says prepare the doors are getting ready to swing open and you're going to look and say I don't know how I found myself in this city and in that one and the Lord says there'll be a fresh reverence and a fresh regard for the word of the Lord that's in your mouth it is not just mercy that's left you here God says it is my plan that has left you here and I'm getting ready to show you what I've been doing and think it not strange that many of your people 
leaders have grown in great envy around you for they cannot fathom how in this season in your life you're doing more and seeing more and having more but God says I would have it be this way that when many around you who started with you are getting ready to retire I'm getting ready to refire you for behold I pulled you back like an arrow of deliverance and now I'm shooting you out even to the ends of the earth said the spirit of God we agree with that in your life I said we agree with that in your life we agree with that in your life come on it is so 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 pastor Brandy I heard the Lord say prepare for your healing you've been preparing for your defeat and you've been preparing for your demise and even in your heart there had been a thing that had gone on where you have been bracing yourself to do life under a new degree of stress but prepare yourself set the spirit of God for I'm getting ready to answer your weeping and I'm going to show you what it is to be a woman kissed by the spirit of grace I'm going to touch your blood I'm going to touch your genetic makeup and I'm going to undo the, the mutation that happened from your grandmother. The very weird molecular uh, uh, structure that has caused these unusual growths and polyps and, and things in your body. I'm going to reverse, uh, reverse, uh, reverse. Uh, and you prepare yourself. Uh, set the spirit of God. Uh, I've heard you talk about how much you hate your house. Uh, and how much you can't stand that living environment. I've heard you said God. And now because I've turned Turn my ear in the direction of a weeping woman. Prepare yourself for my wonder to be in the midst of you. I've not forgotten it except the spirit of the living God. Come on, somebody give the Lord. Woo, woo, woo. Somebody give the Lord praise. Oh, come on. Is that all you got? Our women are treasures. Come on, our women are treasures. Come on. <laughs> 